Matthew 26, 41 says, Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Matthew 10, 22. And you will be hated by everyone because of your association with my name. But it is one who has patiently persevered and endured to the end who will be saved. Luke eight fourteen through 16. The seed which fell among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard. But as they go on their way, they are suffocated with the anxieties and riches and pleasures of this life. And they bring no fruit to maturity. But as for that seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good and noble heart and hold on to it tightly and bear fruit with patience. Luke 9, 23. And he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, He must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross daily, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example, and living and, if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. Luke 21, 18-20 says, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your patient endurance, empowered by the Holy Spirit, you will gain your souls. Romans 8, 13 says, for if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh, you are going to die. But if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body you will really live forever. I come before you, God, in faith by grace. Thank you that you have fully equipped us to do the work of our callings, that is, following you wholeheartedly, patiently enduring every hardship that may come. I thank you that you gave us something we could pray. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We declare we will rid our lives of every source of known temptation as much as possible. We will just drop it as if it is a temptation to us and stick closely to your side. For better is one day to and with you than a thousand elsewhere. You are our fortress and our strong tower in our time of need. We need you in this hour and the days that come to help us stay focused on the prize which is Jesus, every day until the end of our lives, no matter what's going on, never giving up in the faith. We decide right now to lay down all selfish ambition, habits, or desires for you. We decide that we want to do your will and not ours. We willingly have decided to lay our lives down on a daily basis and take up the duties that you ask of us. You are worth it all. You are worth everything. We lay down all addictions, including habits of scrolling through social media for hours instead of spending time in your word. Help us to wake up and acknowledge that it is you who gave us another day and woke us up to go fight the good fight of faith once again. Help us to desire you so much that the only things we want to do are the things that you are doing with us. Help us to know deep down in our hearts the truth that you have not given us a spirit of fear and that you have fully equipped us with everything that we need and that we are not leaky vessels, but your word says that you fill us to overflowing, continually filling us all the days of our lives. And I declare this to be true in our lives and we receive it, accept it, and believe it in Jesus' name. We reinstate ourselves to be in full agreement with your word and because we are full to overflowing, we say we will focus on the one that needs us to be you to them today because you have already met our needs to overflowing. We will focus on loving the ones that are not righteous as your word says you came for the one, not for the 99 righteous. We will be patient in doing this and will not grow weary of doing good deeds. We declare we are good soil and that nothing that God plants in us will die 
but we will nurture it to help it come into full fruition in our lives. And we will nurture it in the lives of those that you have placed within our spheres of influence. In Jesus' name. Romans 5, 2 through 4 says, Through him we have also access by faith into this remarkable state of grace in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and the confident assurance experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God, the manifestation of his excellence and power. And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our sufferings and rejoice in hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, and trouble produces patient endurance and endurance, proven character and spiritual maturity and proven character, hope, and confident insurance of eternal salvation. Romans 12, 9 through 13 says, Be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection as members of one family. Give preference to one another in honor, never lagging behind in diligence, a glow in the spirit, enthusiastically serving the Lord, constantly rejoicing in hope because of our confidence in Christ steadfast and patient in distress, devoted to prayer, continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength, contributing to the needs of God's people, pursuing the practice of hospitality. 1 Corinthians 4.12 says, We work for our living, working hard with our own hands. When we are reveled and verbally abused, we bless When we are persecuted, we take it patiently and endure. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Everything is permissible for me, but not all things are beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under its power, allowing it to control me. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 26 says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run their very best to win, but only one receives the prize? Run your race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Now every athlete who goes into training and completes the games is disciplined and exercises self-control in all things. They do it to win a crown that withers but we do it to receive an imperishable crown that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. I do not flail around like one beating in the air, just shadow boxing. I thank you, Lord, that you first loved us with a deeper love than we could ever understand. This love allows us to be devoted to one another with authentic and true love as members of one family where we show others honor instead of honoring ourselves or exalting ourselves in the situation. I declare we never lack behind in diligence, but we are always glowing and growing in the spirit, enthusiastically desiring to serve the Lord no matter what happens in our lives. I declare we will constantly rejoice in hope because of our confidence in Christ in our consistency and patience in difficult situations, always devoting ourselves to prayer, continually seeking his wisdom, guidance, and strength, and all the while we have needs, knowing that God has met all of our needs in Christ Jesus, giving to those also in need. I thank you, Lord, that you have given us the ability to bless people when we are abused and patiently endure when we are persecuted, that we daily take up our cross and follow you and lay down our concerns for what ourselves want. I know that it may be permissible for me to act a certain way, and I would like to act a certain way sometimes, but I know that it is not beneficial to me or to others to act in ways that my flesh wants, but rather it is beneficial for me to act in the way that the Holy Spirit would have me act through blessing those who abuse and persecute or slander me. So I declare in every walk of life, I will respond with love, patience, and joy to the difficult people around me, continually giving God my concerns and prayer, knowing that I am able to trust him to bring justice to every situation and that as I am kind to these people, that it will show them who Christ is 
which is the ultimate reason that we're here. I declare we have the endurance to endure until God releases us from any situation that we may not be in that seems favorable. I declare that we will run the race as our eyes are set on the prize and we will not just train to have victory in front of other people, but we will train as if we are searching wholeheartedly to do what it takes to win the prize, which is Christ in our hearts. We will endure and we will run the race. We will win and we will not give up in long suffering. We will not give up having patience. We will not give up in having self-control and love towards one another as if they were family. We will continue to show your love for those around us so that we can love them the way that you would. Thank you for loving us first, nurturing us through the process so that we don't back down or get weary of doing good in the name of Jesus.